Right, so we've got this lovely box of pastels here um, and we want to use them and we want to get them out. Um, but the first thing that I recommend you do is give yourself a colour chart, create a colour chart or Unison have got a handmade colour chart like this one here. It's three sheets, it's super useful. Um, I found it invaluable and you can see I've already ticked the ones that I already have. Um, so um, I do thoroughly recommend getting that colour chart but you can also make your own um, and you can just get um, a piece of watercolour paper, something like this is fine, it doesn't have to be specific pastel paper, um, just has to have a little bit of um, tooth to it to make it adhere to it. Um, and you could make yourself one just like that, just a simple grid, something as, as simple as that. It doesn't have to be a bought one or it doesn't have to be anything fancy. But just making your colour chart, uh, yourself a colour chart from your colours is really, really useful. And then you can mark down what it is. So we've got grey 34 and then just give yourself some colour in there. Now what you should do, there you go, grey 34. What you should do when you're using your colour chart, because this is really important, is that you should always test your colours on the same colour paper that you're, you've done your colour chart on. Because if you use, say for example, this pastel mat here, which is dark grey, you're going to find that your pastel colour is actually a bit different to what your to what's on your colour chart and you're going to think oh is that the right colour or not so always test your colours and choose your colours by using a piece of paper the same colour as your colour chart otherwise it can get really confusing I learnt that lesson the hard way so that's a really good tip there for you now um, using the pastels themselves you're either going to have to unwrap them or break them or use them whole. There really are lots of um, different ways to use them and how you use them really depends on your um, your preferences on how you use the pastels themselves. So we can unwrap them and you can either peel them off like this and with the help of a knife that's quite useful um, and then you get a, a full label off like this which is quite handy otherwise you end up peeling it and ripping it and um, that can be quite annoying um, so you can have a whole pastel like this or now this is what I tend to do is I will break a third to a half off the end and it really depends on how much comes out the end you, you're not totally in control with about how much comes out but if we compare these two it's it's just under a half there so that's another way you can use it then you can use this piece this piece here or you can use this piece here and either way is is good this one you can make a flat edge and then cover a, a wide area um, and you've also got some really sharp edges coming around here as well um, and again this one has got really sharp edges and you can change how you hold the pastel as well and I'll show you more about that later on when I'm doing the um, demonstration and some, um, I'll show you some marks on the paper as well. So here's, a, here's one that I've used, it's got a flat edge to it, really useful if I'm going to be using um, or covering a, a big area, say like if I wanted a really dark background that would be really useful, there's a nice flat edge across there. Um, here's one where I've broken a third um, and I can hold it like this at the end to use it. Um, 
that's another third there oh and these ones it's really good to have some kind of container to keep your little shards in so what I've got is a, a pink box these are business cards business card boxes I've got a brown box as well I've also got a green box and it's really great to hold these little shards in because sometimes you just need a tiny little piece and it's perfect in there. All I've done is put a little bit of a, a sponge in there to um, absorb all the dust at the bottom. Now there's other things you can do with pastels. Um, I'm going to show you those two things now. got a board let's just prop that up a little bit there we go right so the first one this one right we've got actually before we do that just because this pastel is dirty, I'll just show you the, how to clean these. Now, I find when I clean the pastels that they are, um, that's when they create the most dust. So I do wear a mask when I clean them and I literally take the end and I just spin them in the cloth like this. And then they come out nice and clean. And it, it really is quite important to clean them because for example this one here it looks like I don't know if it looks like um, <laughs> this on your screen but it is quite dirty and dark and it's much darker than the actual colour of the pastel so I'm just going to clean one side of it so you can see so that's the true colour and if I turn it round that was the dirty side so it's a lot darker so that's why it's a good idea to clean your pastel otherwise you'll pick up the wrong colour there and I'd like to say that I clean my pastels when I put them away after I've used them but to be honest I probably don't probably clean them when I take them out and uh, use them again There we go. So it su makes such a difference to have nice clean pastels. And then if you've got um, a pastel that's still in its wrapper, just wipe around the ends and clean those off like that. One of the biggest things um, I see people <laughs> have problems with is if they drop their pastels and um, they cry. I've cried with dropped pastels. So the solution to that is to have a carpet on the floor or a rug that you don't mind getting dirty that helps um, soften the blow when they land but also remember that when you drop them they create really interesting edges and, and they are super useful when they're like that so don't cry too much it will be fine and you'll find a really good use for something like that okay so two really good things that you can do with pastels besides just using them dry is to use them wet so this is a really good te technique that you can do um, one you can use water and another one you can use uh, alcohol isopropyl al alcohol or otherwise known as um, surgical spirit in the UK, um, otherwise known as isopropyl alcohol. I wouldn't recommend using surgical spirit because it stinks to high heaven. Um, absolutely stinks and uh, not, not a good idea. So the advantage of using the alcohol over the water will become clear in a moment. You can see the pastel goes to paint. looks just like paint and it's really good for um, can blend colours together 
really nice creating sky effects, um, backgrounds, and of course once it's dry, you can add more layers over the top. So that one is the alcohol, there we go, and then the top one I'm going to put water on it. You can see the alcohol starting to dry already, and there's the, the water, and the water will take about half an hour to dry, but they're, they're both really... Um, nice ways of of achieving um, different effects achieving an underpainting but the alcohol is just much quicker to dry you can see look there it's just drying already and you can go over the top it doesn't it doesn't make it um, impervious to touch but um, you can you see look there already I can put some more pastel on top there we go put some more on top In. This is really good for landscapes. As one of the um, Unison artists, associate artists, Nina Squire uses this one a lot for her her um, landscapes. So it's a really useful technique to get a nice underpainting going. Um, and the water one is still wet, whilst this one has already had a second coat. So that's a nice way to, to use the pastels. Um, if you go on the Unison blog, you can see lots of different ways that people use them. Um, it's a really good read, and you can discover lots of different ways to do things. I think one of the things I want to get across the most tonight is that it's, there is no best way to do something. The, the actual best way to do something is the way that you find the best, the one that, that makes you have um, lots of joy and, and makes your heart sing. Um, don't, don't feel like you have to do something in a specific way. It's really down to you and your choice. Now that paper that I used there was pastel mat. Um, it is a waterproof paper and um, it's, it's quite good to use water on, on there and the isopropyl alcohol. But, for example, you wouldn't use it on velour paper. That would be a, a, a not a very good paper to get wet at all because it would literally just go straight through the paper. So you do have to be careful um, what you're using. And I have got other videos on YouTube about paper if you'd like to learn more about paper. Now, before we go on to... Um, looking at using the sticks I was just going to talk to you about how to store them now I used to store them in the box just like this that's um, a really good way to store them but um, as I progressed I needed different ways to store them and here is how I store them at the moment which is a pull-out tray that I've got. I really like to see the pastels in all one place. They are very messy at the moment. Please do forgive me for that. Um, I'm right in the middle of a few projects at the moment, so they're all really quite messy. So I've got them in little trays, and this is just an IKEA pull-out tray in a kind of a um, chest of drawers type unit that I had made. Um, but there are other much simpler solutions you can use. You can use the 
um, some wooden boxes. You can use loads of ideas that are recycled. I'm just going to show you a few. We have got here's some trays. There's the uh, the pigs in blankets tray from Christmas. We've got this that I found in IKEA. This was um, a piece of packaging on um, just one of their their units, and um, they let me have that. That looks quite useful to use. This is a a Lego empty Lego box that is meant to be thrown away, but actually really useful for pastels. Um, you could use your old Chinese takeaway boxes as well. You could also use what have I got here. Oh yeah. Look. Here's a, a platter from the supermarket, that is ideal for storing your pastels, so don't feel that you need anything special. I think personally that as you, um, the way you store your pastels is very much down to your personality and how you like to do things in life. If you like things to be all in order and neat, you might want them all in their boxes. If you like to see everything in one go you might want to store them like I have. I found this um, really handy set on um, eBay. It's um, little trays that all stack together and they're quite useful. That's a, um, a full set of 72 pastels in there which is very handy. Um, you can also get prim boxes. Um, a lot of people know Emma Colbert. She's another Unison uh, artist, associate artist, and she uses the prim boxes, which are P-R-Y-M, and the um, 18 size um, pastel foam inserts fit in the prim boxes. So if you like ordering in colour, that's a good way to do it as well. So the best thing to do is to find something that really works for you. Right, now we're going to move on to using the stick. So I'm just going to rearrange the cameras for a moment. There we go. I've got a full stick here, um, virtually, which has got a flat side to it. So let's see what happens when we do that. Great, that's a nice even coverage on the paper. That's what you want, but sometimes the sticks aren't like that. I'm going to try and find one that isn't like that. Uh, Let's see what we get this side. No, this is typical, isn't it? No, that one's too good. Let's find, <laughs> let's find one that's not going to work. Oh, what is going on? This is usually you try and get a flat edge and it's um, you get tram lines all over the place. There we go. Look at that. You get a mess, something like that. And you get, for example, you get that shape there. And it's very frustrating. And you can't um, seem to fill in any, any, of, uh, uh, any of the paper. And you end up with a, a mess of colour that you can't blend. And you, you end up like this and saying, well, that's no good. It doesn't blend. And this is very um, down, much down to the paper that I'm using here. It's... Um, Again, it's pastel matte, and if you had something like a watercolour paper, it would blend much easier. Um, if you had a sanded paper, you you would have the same issue with the pastels not blending. But what you basically have to do is just wear the pastel down so you do get a flat edge, and then you get a nice even coverage, and then you blending is so much easier. And a lot of people, especially beginners, I hear you say, um, you can't blend, it's not blending. So, if it's not blending, you need to add more pastel, which we can do, add more pastel. Or you need to get a blending tool. So adding more pastel is helping us get that to blend, that's good. Or a blending tool is something like... A tortillon, this is a, a good blending tool. A tortillon tends to lift the pastel and it blends it really, um, really well. It blends it like... If you need to blend your pastel about 
and you are you don't want to add more pastel on the paper this is a really good tool can you see look how it it moves it beyond the area that I put the pastel in so I can move that up there so it really spreads it about so that's a really good tool to use and then I can use my finger I really do like using my finger to blend it's uh, I do find it gives some a really nice texture and doesn't over blend so if you're someone who feels like you over blend um, that is a really good um, way to not over blend with just using your finger and sometimes you need to just keep on with your finger and very slowly it does start to blend and it gives you some really nice effects on the paper okay so you can what we've we got next edges right edges really um, sharp edges when you snap a pastel so that one we snapped earlier is it's the one we snapped earlier it has got some really nice sharp edges and you can create some good sharp lines like this very easily like that um, you can use the little tiny shards they are really really useful as I was saying earlier something like this this is something sorry that... I don't have an answer for that thank you Alexa this was one that actually broke and a piece fell off the end and um, it's given me a really nice tiny little shard where I can get in and use for a very small area so that's really handy and you see I'm, I'm using it between my thumb and my middle finger and um, it that means I can have a really light touch which is very important speaking of light touches the way to um, get a light touch is to hold your pastel further back which is why I like to keep these little um, paper um, uh, wraps on the pastel because it means I can hold the pastel further back so whilst I've taken this bit out perhaps I need to use this for a flat edge like that that bit I can use for the flat edge and the sharp edges um, this bit I might want to use for perhaps getting some really nice fur effects and I'm rolling it round to be a bit more random than usual. You don't often see blue fur I know but you get the idea. I can roll it in my fingers to be more random um, and I can hold it further back to be lighter with it getting a very light touch. Again talking about the light touch if you want to create um, a an area where you've got just a a small amount of pastel so for an underpainting for example I was doing um, an orangutan today in a um, in a tutorial on zoom and um, we were putting down a base layer of very very light pastel and you can if you listen to the sound of the pastel when it's on the paper it's, it's very different to when I press hard quite heavy and hard there and then here really you can hear it differently so it's a really good idea to practice being light handed and pressing really hard so for example if you were doing a sky perhaps and you had some um, some nice clouds you might want to get your sky in quite thick and then leave a space for a cloud you want a lots of lovely blue violet sky and then put a thick layer on for a cloud so you can make it look really fluffy like a cloud is meant to be 
and then gently blend it. Doing that with light layers really would not work. So a really good thing for you to practice is getting those differences in the pressure. Pressing really hard, pressing really light. You can create quite a nice wispy feather. You, you might not be able to see that um, cloud on zoom too well because of the contrast of the light and the dark, but on the um, recording you should see that much better. The, doing light layers to create that um, cloud is is going to be virtually impossible. So you need something thick there. So practice um, your pressure and learning how to change the pressure. And sometimes I hold them so lightly that I, I drop them. <laughs> but it just goes to show how lightly you're holding them. And I'm not even... Um, putting any pressure on that when I put it on the paper and it gives me such a light layer and you can be really light handed and then if you're doing fur for example you're going to be doing so let's get some brown for some fur um, we want to just pull that down like that for example we've got some nice light layers there bit of a darker brown. I'm just rolling it to be a bit more loose with it and I can blend it in and it doesn't move and that's what I want. I don't want all my um, fur to, to blend together. I want it to stay where it is and then I can put some more layers on really lightly and you can build up just like that. So next I've got three examples for you, just to show you different techniques. Uh, again you can go on the Unison website and you can look at all the, um, all the associate artists on there. We've all got slightly different methods or very different methods. You've got people like um, Bethany Fields and Gail Sibley who do a, a lot of mark making techniques beautiful artwork. You've got Vera Cavera, um, I hope I've said her name right there. Um, she uses a, a very light touch with the pastels. Um, Emma Colbert who uses um, the Unison pastels for most of her animal work um, with a touch of pastel pencil. Um, we've got Nina Squire who, who I mentioned before who does the vodka. Um, We've got Kathy Pierce who does um, a lot of bold colour and, and uses, um, it looks like she uses quite a lot of pressure um, because the pastel is quite thick on there. So really it, there is no correct way to use the pastels. The, the, the way to use them is the way that makes you enjoy them the most. Right, I'm just going to wash my hands off. So I don't use wet wipes, I use um, these little cloths that I wash and re-wet um, re in a box with a little bit of tea tree oil to stop the bacteria and um, I can have them in my studio. There's a little video on my YouTube how I do that. Um, if, if you don't want to use wet wipes, um, I stopped using those. Right, let's just try my hands off. And first of all, we've got this little dog, little dog eye here. This was a tutorial that I did uh, a few, a couple of months ago, I think now. Um, there's the the photo reference there. Uh, I have started it for you just to um, get us going to the important bit that I want to show you. And firstly, to put some colour in the eye, and I'm using a lovely red oh it's a brown earth actually it's BE17 I believe to put some colour in the eye and I'm being quite delicate here and you might wonder how I'm managing to actually get on the eye as opposed to 
putting the pastel somewhere else when you can't see what you're doing um, and that is practice. Um, what I've had to do is put my head over this side so I could see where I was actually touching the paper so like like this so I could actually see where it was touching and then the more you practice that over time the more um, able you are to be able to do it without actually looking and you can also give yourself a little mark on the paper and, and you, you'll know where you are from that little tiny mark and it, it won't ruin the painting because you've just used a little tiny mark um, and then you can get your blenders you can spread it about if you need to with a, this is a rubber blender you can spread the pastel about like that or you could combine it with pastel pencils and that's what I like to do using the the sticks in conjunction with the pastel pencils so I'm just going to put a little bit more on here a bit of a darker colour in there so I like the strength of the pastels and then I use my pencils more like paint brushes and manipulate the pastel and move it about and I usually use little circles and um, uh, it's like tickling the paper to move the pastel about Another thing you can do with your um, pastels is use your blender to pick up some of the pigment and put it on that way. It, it does work with rubber blenders but it's, it's better with a tortillon. Whatever my tortillon, ah oh, there it is, right in front of me. Much better with a tortillon, it picks up quite a lot as you can see on the end there. And get that in there that's a really good way to do it if you've got something really fiddly that's a really nice way to get the pigment on like that then we can just blend the colors across there okay and then for the fur I've already put some black on here and I've used a mixture of a, a hard Faber-Castell stick to do some drawing-like um, guidelines and a, a unison black there to give me some strength of colour in there and to get really close to the eye I would fill in with the pastel pencil to get really close there and then the fur I'd start building that up with a, a Unison Dark 22. It's a really nice dark blue that I like using. And I've got a, a BV18 here as well. Just a good, nice blue for a, a black coat on a dog. Okay, and then I use my blender to spread this pastel about. Right, coming right into the the highlight that comes across here. And then a little bit of a, a lighter blue, uh, BG blue, blue green three. This one is getting some of that highlight on there. You see, I'm holding the pastel right at the end, 
and, and this is to give me this super light touch, just flicking it across. And it is, is a learning curve how to hold these pastels and how to use them. Um, but very quickly, with a little bit of practice, you, you'll build up enough um, confidence to be able to manipulate the pastels and hold them to get this light touch. And then I'd use a, a nice pencil to give me some finer lines and some highlights on here. Pulling it down over the soft pastel and if you've gone light enough you can definitely get the pencil over the top of the of the pastel. I hear it quite a lot that people struggle with getting pastel pencil over um, pastel soft pastel sticks and it is all to do with the amount of pressure you use to um, to put that pastel on and you want to keep it nice and thin and nice and light light nice and light handed and then you'll you'll get this ability to mix your pastel sticks and pastel pencils. There. So we've got some fine detail there, some fur in there. Just and I've actually got a time lapse of this particular dog on YouTube if you want to see the whole the whole dog created. There we go. Our next one is an owl. There, so I'm going to show you how using the, the flat edge of the pastel to to create some effects. Some of you talking about um, fixative on the, the chat. Um, I always find fixative is an art in itself. And you can hear one person say that fixative works and another person say that fixative doesn't work. So it, it really is a case of um, learning to use the fixative to, um, to work for you. Right, next one, we've got an owl. There's our owl with... Um, a little bit of blue pastel on it unfortunately, but never mind. So this blue owl has got some lovely pinks and purples in it as well. Um, and I'm going to show you how I created that. So I used a, a white first of all. And I used a combination of a white um, hard stick and a white, um, a white unison stick. And I've got a nice flat edge to this. And I'm shaping the pastel round and shaping it out round this way. And the the the, what, the thin stick I used more for um, drawing with to create uh, more drawing marks than painterly marks. So pulling it out like this. Again, I, th I think there's a time lapse of this one on YouTube as well. So using the hard stick to do more drawing marks and the soft stick to do more of painterly marks. And then you could use either stick to create some more heavy pressure marks like this. I don't really use hard sticks, only the black and the white. I find those quite useful. And then I'll get some other colours like this lovely BV18 
beautiful um, violet or lilac colour and really softly I can apply that over the top I'm using my little finger to stop me pressing too hard so my finger is controlling how close I get to the paper like this and it's it's meaning I don't press as hard as I otherwise would if I didn't have that little sort of guard there to stop me. I've got a bit of A30. This is still a long stick. I don't have no reason to break it at the moment, so it's it's still in one piece. I can add a little bit of that in there. Again, I'm going so lightly. And the beauty of going so lightly is that your pastels last a long time and then a, a pink to take us more pinky and then I can blend those colours to create the effect of the, the light that's bouncing off the white And then I'd just go again with some more more white to build up the colour. Yeah, just finding my flat edge there. I think at first you you find yourself sort of looking around for edges, but as you as you progress and practice more, you intuitively find the edges and, and it's not um you just find yourself doing it without even thinking about it. There. Okay, so that's using um, flat edges. And then over here on the end I've got some horses, a horse's mane. So this was a, a Christmas horse that we did. And Somebody's just said, seems like every rule can be broken. Yes, <laughs> you can break every rule. Um, you can do exactly what you like with art. It is your art. You can do whatever you like. Um, here I'm working light to dark, whereas most people think that um, with pastel you must work dark to light. It, it really is a personal choice and what works for you. So please don't ever feel that you have to do something because somebody said you had to do it. Um, it's art, it's free expression, you can do what you like. Okay, so I'm putting on here some some marks for the main. I'll just show you the picture for that one. There it is. It's a very purpley, violety um, mane. It's a horse's mane in the snow. And I'm putting some marks on in the direction of the hair flicking back up to the neck of the horse there are some really small marks across here so I'm just doing those small marks and I'm rolling my pastel as I do this to keep my edge sharp So I don't suddenly end up with a really thick mark because I've um, worn my pastel down too much. And you can change the pressure here. You can do a, some marks that are a little bit harder and some that are a little bit softer, less pressure. And then again we can use the um, some of the violet across here like this and blend that in and then you see like the, the violet just tints the white and it's a really nice effect and also what I do with this is using the pastel pencils and like I used the, the pastel stick that ran over the top you can do the same 
with the pastel pencils. And again, it will don't you don't have to worry too much about going over the white. It will just be darker in the places that the white pastel isn't. And you get a really nice fur effect with that. Not fur, hair. <laughs> and I've got a, a lovely um, purple here as well. You can do the same with and run that across there. Creates a really nice, simple hair effect. Like that. So obviously that was really quick and um, you can see the time lapses, I think, of most of these. If not, I'll put them on the... Um, see these all the way through to see how I do this and also the tutorials for these three, these three are also available on my website so there are quite a fun ones to do with some of my favourites there right I think we are at the end um, just going through my list I think we've done everything covered everything I hope that has um, the magnets um, I used on these boards someone's just asked are um, I just bought them on Amazon. They are extra strong um, fridge magnets. That's all they are. Nothing, nothing special, more special than that. Okay. And who makes the the board? The board I made myself. It was a piece of um, MDF. I'll just try and turn that on the end there. You see the end of the board. You see that's MDF. A bit of MDF there, and a bit of a magnetic sheet on top. That's all it is. Just a bit of MDF from B&Q and um, magnetic sheet from um, anywhere that you can find it. It's self-adhesive and goes on the back. Um, right. I didn't see all your questions because I was too busy talking. <laughs> but um, hopefully I can save the questions and um, I will answer them for you in the Unison group. Um, I'll just check. I haven't got any messages from everyone. Um, Thank you, Lindsay. No, I haven't. It's okay. Okay, no, that's fine. That's all good. So, um, if we've got any more questions. Great, I'm glad you're finding it all really useful. That's good. Thank you. Thank you very much. So this is going to be all recorded and um, I will um, send out the video. I think it might come out on um, Thursday uh, afternoon because I've got, uh, I, I started a tutorial today and that one's got to go out first and then this one will go out after it. So um, yeah, as soon as I can do that, um, I will get it out to you and Unison will send it out to you. But if you don't get it, do shout. Um, and you've got a very nice um, little voucher coming your way as a thank you for signing up today um, that you can um, spend in my um, tutorial shop. So um, thank you very much and um, I shall hopefully see you soon in the group. Thank you for the thumbs up. <laughs> Thanks everybody.